In the Scottish Highlands, there is a fairy known as the Falcon, a creature so terrifying that one look straight into its face is said to be deadly. Because so few have laid eyes on the Falcon and survived, stealing a glimpse here as it lurches at impossible speeds through the Highlands, or a glance there as it vanishes behind rocky outcroppings, leaving behind a spray of blue feathers. Descriptions of this fairy are fragmented at best. Piecing together what few descriptions we do have, we are left with the impression of a hideous, bird-like giant with a temper as foul as its looks. Covered head to toe in dark blue feathers, the Falcon is said to have one eye, one leg, one arm, which extends grotesquely from the center of its feathery chest. With this bent and twisted arm, the falcon wields either a spiked club or a heavy chain, which it uses to attack those who come too close, or else to wantonly destroy. It is said that full farmers' fields ready to be harvested or ripe apple orchards have been laid to waste in a single night by the Falcon's massive sweeping chain. Also known as Pegleg Jack, the Falcon is surprisingly quick and agile on its single veiny leg and can leap impressive heights and distances, both to escape being spotted and to suddenly and viciously attack. Jealous of birds for their beauty and grace and most importantly, their ability to fly, he is known to hunt them and leave their mangled carcasses strewn across the hills. Falcon also deeply despises humanity and will try to harm us whenever the opportunity arises. Though the reasons for its seething hatred are unclear, it is best to stay away from this powerful and angry giant. So... If you are ever in the Scottish Highlands and come across some dark blue feathers near a dead bird or a tree that looks to have been smashed apart by a chain, leave the area right away and don't look back. The Far Darroch, whose name in Irish means Red Man, is a solitary fairy who loves to dress himself in red. Whether a cap or a coat or a belt or a pair of shoes, red is this fairy's signature color, and he is rarely seen without it, sometimes known as Rat Boy because of his long snout and rat-like tail. The Far Darroch is short and stout, with a quick but slouching gait and an overall dirty and disheveled appearance. Known to frequent old wharfs, marshes, and bogs, the far derrick's tastes run to carrion and raw fish. But don't let his foul taste and slovenly looks fool you. This fairy has a sly and mischievous personality, and is as clever as they come, a troublemaker of the highest order. One of his favorite pastimes is playing cruel and sometimes gruesome practical jokes on unsuspecting humans, and then jeering and laughing maniacally at the resulting chaos. It is always risky business to be caught up in one of these games. His milder pranks include poltergeist-like destruction of homes and businesses, and bringing disturbing nightmares or night terrors to his targets while his more elaborate pranks involve kidnapping, whether stealing babies or replacing them with changelings, or luring unsuspecting humans to abandoned and isolated shacks and locking them in with only the foul stench of death around them and the sound of the Far Derek's mocking laughter. But, though a run-in with the Far Derek is always frightening, these encounters rarely end in serious harm, this fairy seems to be quite content to terrify and may not even be aware that his pranks are, to put it mildly, extreme, or that others are not as amused by them as he is. Some say an encounter with the far Derek can even bring luck, depending on this fairy's mood. 
Some have even speculated that to be pranked by the far Derek is in fact a compliment. For he only pranks those he finds most interesting, and after he's had his fun, he truly wishes his victims well. Though this may be a little comfort to those who have found themselves the targets of some cruel bit of foolery. Whatever his intentions, it's probably best to steer clear of this mischievous fairy. Or, if you do find yourself the butt of one of his jokes, to inform him politely that you do not want to be mocked, and ask that he leave you in peace. The Dark Man, or in Irish, the Far Dorha, appears as a tall, imposing man dressed from head to toe in black. He is the official kidnapper of the fairy world. No one knows exactly what the Far Dorha looks like. To see his face is to be one of his victims. By all indications, the Far Dorha is an automaton. He doesn't speak, he hardly seems to even breathe, he only hunts focus singularly and relentlessly on his target. If a fairy queen or some other powerful fae desires a particular human, for a servant, for a lover, for a slave, it is the far Dorha who will be sent to collect. Like the Nazgul seeking out the One Ring in Tolkien's famous tale, the far Dorha is single-minded and obsessive in his search for his intended target. If the far Dorha targets you, you will not see him coming. A cold wind and an eerie silence may be the only signs of his arrival. And then, darkness. Similar in guise and manner to the Anku and the Dullahan, some have speculated that these three are in fact one and the same. But there is a kind of sadness about the far Dorha that sets him apart. Though he carries out his duties with cold-blooded effectiveness, there is a hint of a soul behind the ruthless hunter that wishes to be free. For this reason, some have speculated that the Far Dorha may himself be a slave, cursed for all eternity to do the bidding of some cruel fairy queen, who owns him, body and soul, as the result of a past crime, slight, or broken promise. Whatever the case, there is no negotiating with this fairy if he targets you. Any appeal for mercy will fall on deaf ears. And there's no escape either. For whether or not he is a willing hunter, the far Dorha always gets his prey. We often think of the fairies in terms of their strange, menacing, and mysterious interactions with us. But Scottish tales of the Fear Kalish give us a rare glimpse into the fairies' interactions with each other. More specifically, what happens when the fairy people go to war? Legend has it that long ago, two great fairy chieftains fell in love with the same woman and a fight broke up between the pair. It spiraled and expanded, insult was mounted upon insult, slight was compounded with slight, until entire clans were dragged into the melee. Finally, the conflict erupted into a war so large in scale, so devastating in impact, that it threatened to rip apart the sky. To this day, the battle continues, seeping into our world in flashes and streaks, that blend in and are often confused with the northern lights. The fighters in this never-ending battle are known by the people of Scotland's Orkney Islands as the Fir Chlish, the Nimble Ones, or Merry Dancers, or perhaps more fittingly, the Miri or Shimmering Dancers, those that bleed through into our world in the shifting glow of the Aurora Borealis. 
In this fierce battle, swords clash, elf shots are fired, and the blood of a thousand fairies stains the sky in a throbbing red glow. For, as the Scottish proverb says, when the merry dancers play, they are like to slay. The blood spilled in this battle is also said to fall to the earth, showing up in the form of heliotropes or bloodstones, where splatters of elf blood are preserved forever in rock. No one knows how long this war will last, or indeed if it will ever come to an end. And though it produces a shimmering spectacle in the human world that we may find beautiful, if the dam that keeps their world from spilling fully into ours were ever to break, then we could find ourselves in the middle of a fight we do not understand and are not equipped to engage in. A fight that could drown both our peoples in a streaking, shimmering, and bloody torrent of light. In Italy, Valetti is an all-purpose term for elves, but is also used to describe a specific breed of fairy, a type of goblin that rides with manic glee on the breezes. The Valetti are fairies as most would imagine them, miniature humanoids tiny enough to ride on the backs of grasshoppers, and this they do with wild abandon, playing a game similar to polo in long, swaying grasses. The Faletti appear as perfectly proportional humans, but shrunken down in size, and with an additional unusual attribute. Toes that curl up and point backwards like elf shoes. Also known as wind knots, the Faletti are fairies of the air and sky. They ride the winds as surfers ride the waves and seem to delight in all forms of destructive weather. Stirring up whirlwinds or reveling at the center of thunderstorms, the Faletti seem only to appear when the wind is wild. They rush along with it, slapping at cheeks and turning them red. They'll tear at your hair, too, and pull at your clothing, and laugh and shriek and scream with joy as the wind howls and thunder cracks. For these fairies are troublemakers at heart, and lovers of chaos, especially the type caused by the unbridled forces of nature. And yet, it is unclear whether or not the Faletti intend harm to human beings, or even pay any attention to us at all. Like the wind and the rain, they behave as forces of nature, totally unaware of us and focus solely on their own mysterious ends. Whatever the case, the Faletti are not to be trifled with. Capable of bringing down trees and inciting avalanches, they derive ecstatic pleasure in smashes and crashes and roars, and would not bat an eye if a human being was harmed in the process. The best you can do to avoid these chaotic fairies is to take cover when a storm rises and stay out of the path of destruction. In Scandinavian lore, the Fossigrim, or simply the Grim, or River Man, is a water fairy who haunts rivers, ponds, and waterfalls. The Fossigrim appears most often as a beautiful and alluring man who stands in or by a body of water, playing otherworldly music on his fiddle. While sometimes he is clothed in a thin garb, at other times he appears completely naked his legs and feet swirling away into a kind of mist. The music he plays is haunting and seductive, unlike anything you've ever heard before, and possesses the siren-like ability to draw you willingly towards your doom. For the Fossigrim is a type of drowning fairy, known to lure people to their deaths by holding them under rushing waters like a living undertow, until their hearts stop. 
It is unclear whether the Fosse Grun drowns out of malevolence or a twisted desire for companionship. Stories of the Fosse Grim include him leading others to a watery grave, but also, strangely, include tales of him being led by a human onto the land. In those stories, the Fosse Grim falls in love, his heart now belonging for a time to a particular human. He follows this new human master irresistibly out of the water and then leads a life on the land. In these tales, the Fosse Grimm is a kind of tragic character, longing desperately to return to the water, but is so captivated by his human love, he is unable to do so and lives virtually as a prisoner. This suggests a deep vulnerability in the Fosse Grimm, who, despite being a deadly danger to humans who venture too close to the water, is in danger from them as well if the right one comes along. The Fosse Grimm is also known to teach rare humans how to play music as he does. An aspiring musician who heads to the waterside and encounters a Fosse Grimm might, with the right words, convince the fairy to impart his secret knowledge. But this is a risky venture, for the Fosse Grimm could just as easily decide to kill as to teach. If he does choose to teach, the lessons will not be without suffering. It is said that music lessons from the Fosse Grimm persist until nails crack and fingers bleed. But anyone who can survive these trials will walk away with an unrivaled musical ability. Despite these temptations, to gain a great talent or a dedicated lover, it is probably best to stay away from the Fosse Grimm who more than likely will not give up his gifts and instead bury the one who seeks him out forever under the waves. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to all my supporters on Patreon for their continued support. I love you guys, and you are really helping to keep this channel going. If you'd like to support this work on Patreon, there's a link in the description, including a few other support options as well. If you have a fairy encounter story to share, I'm always collecting those, so check the description because my email is there, and I'm looking forward to reading your tale. Don't forget to comment, like, and share. Those are great ways to support the channel as well. And subscribe if you're new. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother. <laughs>